What's up y'all, Jeremy Hazen here, super excited. I am back at our Nashville campus this week. Um, I haven't played in a while or done a vlog in a while uh, because of the craziness that has gone on. And also uh, we had a tornado that hit our building at our main campus. The roof was kind of blown off, walls were in, it was pretty bad. They've got everything patched up, ready to roll for this Sunday. I got scheduled via planning center. Um, that's what we use to throw all of the songs on and charts and everything. So since all this pandemic stuff has been going on, my wife and I, we've moved homes. So my practice room at our previous house is no longer in our new house. So this is actually the first time I'm gonna have my kit set up and be able to play a little bit. I'm super excited. Let me get this thing set up. So we've got a couple songs that I haven't played yet. I'm gonna run it through, got everything set up, pumped. Might be a little rusty. Gotta get these cobwebs out of here. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want. I'll see you next time. wanted to kind of walk through the Nashville number system for you guys. So I printed off some of the songs we're doing this week. Basically, the Nashville number system is pretty easy to follow. Everything is set up on a grid with numbers. Let's say we're doing the song in the key of E. Each number indicates the note of that key. Each number in this grid indicates four beats, or if you're playing the song in six, eight, you know, six beats, whatever. Whatever the time signature is, that's your grid. So there's other intricate notes on the number system that you can go through, like there's a little diamond here. Basically, you hold that out for four beats or whatever the time signature is. And then it kind of runs down the whole song, just a little bit cleaner and easier to follow through, especially for me as a drummer. I've gotten to the point where I can kind of hear the progression of the song and I'll know where we're at if I'm not just sitting there counting, which I really do. I just try and feel the song out. It is good to count though. But once you get to a certain point, you're like, all right, this is where the song is going. I know it's going to go there. Yeah, so that's the national number system is pretty easy, especially as a drummer. Like I'll make notations out along the side of like the kick pattern if I need to fill into a certain section. Just kind of little quick reminders I can glance over, check it out, and be like, okay. And then I know that's coming and I'll kind of get mentally prepared for that. A lot of the times I'll do this as prep work and when I get to rehearsal, if we need to change something super quick, I can just make a quick note. During the services, I kind of just get out of the way and obviously you want to play play the song correctly. If you're kind of just dug into the chart and not really paying attention to what else is going on or allowing yourself to worship, like that's kind of counterproductive in my opinion. I want to be prepared as much as I can when I go into a service to be able to say, hey, let's make this a down down course here, or let's do a hard stop here, whatever the case may be, or your band leader might suggest, you know the song well enough to be able to just say, okay, cool, done, got it. And then just kind of keep everything flowing because you don't want to be a hindrance having not prepared properly. If you have any questions, drop a comment. We'd be happy to answer. Good morning. Gotta get some coffee in. We got the playlist playing. Gonna load out in the garage. Head into church. Sorry for the mess. truck ready to roll to our Nashville campus. Uh, it's the first time I've played in a while so um, pretty pumped about it. We'll get to the church, get all everything set up and play some songs. So I wanted to do a little F-150 confession. Uh, driving into church this morning. I haven't played in a while at this campus. Um, I really haven't played that much drum wise or been able to practice. So. I am nervous <laughs> and um, I'm confident in my ability, but I am just like 
know, you sometimes you just, like still get those butterflies, 33 years old. Um, I've been playing since I was like 16, so. Uh, but you still get those little nerves and butterflies, and I think they're good. Um, I feel like they uh, just kind of keep you in check and make sure you're paying attention. And um, what I kind of have to set my mind to is not to overthink stuff. Um, I really can overthink a part and try to do too much when I really just need to kind of sit back and let the song take care of itself. So um, it's kind of what I'm going to try and do this morning is just kind of, you know, already said a prayer, just kind of got my heart and mind right. Just try and go in this morning with a heart of like gratitude for being able to play drums this morning. So that's super thankful for that but yeah that's just a little nervous so uh i don't know do you guys still get nervous drop a comment if you do but um yeah i think it's healthy just don't let it overwhelm you still stay confident um and just kind of keep it simple that's all f-150 confession number one in the books i like it
to you guys about how I tear stuff down and get ready to load out. I'm pretty OCD about a lot of things when it comes to tearing down. I like things to be in a specific place in a specific way. <laughs> so the first thing I like to do is get my ears, wind them up. That way I know that they're there in the right spot. I tie them up, loop the bottom adapter and tie it in a knot so they're nice and compact. Put them in my case that they came with. It's like a little Pelican case. It's a little waterproof. I know those are there. These are actually my backup pair of ears. I got some new ones and the cable broke on me. So, and I have this attached to my stick bag. If I take my stick bag, my ears are with it. That's the first thing I make sure I have. Then I get my sticks loaded up. I do like to keep my bass drum beater in my bag. I've got a Zorro beater. That's what I've used for a couple years now. Feels good, nice and punchy and fat. I like it, works well for worship stuff. So yeah, I'll throw that in there. I do have a headphone jack and then I attached a carabiner to it. I'll plug this into our AVM mixer, hook this onto my like belt loop. That way it's there and it gives me some flexibility if I need to move around, which I'm sitting down so I don't need to move that much in the case I need to. Got a little pouch that I use that I'll hold some moon gels, cymbal felts up top. On my ride, I like to use a little chain thing that I've fashioned just to give a little extra sizzle. So I'll put that in there. Boom. That's typically my stick bag ready to roll out the door. So then after that, I like to get my cymbals down, take my hi-hats off. Typically on a Sunday morning, all this stuff is at the church for us. So we just have to bring our cymbals, snare and sticks and stuff, so. But I do like to take my hi-hat clutch with me, just as a backup to a backup, just in case. Put that in the stick bag as well. My hi-hat's down, and I'll grab my cymbal bag. Go for the hi-hats first. I, w I don't put them in first though, it's kind of weird. Ride, second crash. Just working my way through the bag here. Got little dividers in it. Uh, my main crash, then my hats. I zip it up and I'm ready to go. I will pack up my snare drum. Typically I like to bring a few snares just for songs and uh, just kind of depends on the feel and vibe of the service, what snare I go with and what the room is sounding like. So, yeah, so my snares, um, drum keys obviously, take a drum key and then I've got a couple uh, big fat snare drums that I'll take pretty much air on the side of over preparing with gear versus under. I think that just goes to me being a little bit OCD with that. Hope that helps. If you have any questions with that, drop a comment.